Good morning and welcome to the Baltimore County Human Relations Commission uh, February annual meeting with a new date of February 21st, 2024. This is a daytime meeting. Um, in the event that we do have our scheduled budget town hall meeting since tonight, we're at Delaney Valley High School. Um, we'll certainly talk about that a little further in the presentation. Uh, before we turn it over to our commissioner, Jason Blabbit, I'm going to ask that our uh, compliance specialist, excuse me, specialist, Ms. Ashley Elliott, if she would do roll call, and then we will continue with today's agenda. Um, and I'm not quite sure which one of the team members is pulling up the PowerPoint, but after Commissioner Blount does his does his um, introduction, we ask that you will pull up the uh, PowerPoint. Thank you, Ashley. Okay, um, Commissioner Bryan. Here. Commissioner Greer. Present. Commissioner Blavitt. Commissioner Blavitt. I, I still asked the president. I asked everyone to unmute and I muted myself in the process. I apologize. Oh, okay. Um, Commissioner Jamil. Commissioner Lewis. Commissioner Marshall. Present. Commissioner Blount. Thank you, Ashley. And I do see that we have our guest who is in the waiting area. I am going to actually make him a panelist so that he can come in. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Doug Handy. I saw you there. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to turn this meeting over to our commissioner, J our chairperson, Commissioner Jason Blavitt, for greetings. Um, and then we'll go ahead and pull up the agenda now. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Ms. Brown Carter. Um, good, good morning. Actually, uh, uh, I appreciate you all making time as part of your, your day to uh, have our meeting this month. Uh, and hopefully you'll have the ability to attend uh, the county uh, budget meetings that are taking place, one of which tonight, or those throughout the county as well. And uh, I know during the uh, uh, executive staff report, they're going to they're gonna address that as well. Um, also, just to update, uh, and this is part of the later report, but wanted to make everyone aware that we uh, are uh, still actively seeking additional members of the commission. As of the end of last year, there was significant transition and turnover due to term limits and, and the new regulations, so that currently the commission has um, seven commissioners and uh, the remaining vacancies uh, are, are in the process of being filled and being vetted by the county executive and the uh, county council. As far as uh, the key thing I also want to put at top of mind, which we'll address at the very end of the meeting, is our next meeting, uh, which will be taking place on March 13th. That will be a, a good part of the day meeting. There will be no meeting in the evening, uh, but it'll be an opportunity for us to uh, continue the strategic process that has begun and ready to develop it even more so. And I won't uh, Go into that in any more detail other than to say that uh, certainly you'll hear about that more throughout the meeting. The only other purpose uh, I'd like to address is the minutes from the meeting uh, of December 13th, which you all uh, uh, received, uh, commissioners received uh, via email. Uh, are there any additions, corrections, deletions to those minutes? Hearing none, they will be accepted. And uh, again, I thank you for your participation and uh, Turn it back over to uh, Ms. Brown Carter for uh, her report. Actually, I should say, the commissioners, do you, do you have any uh, commission reports, something that you'd like to report out of your district? Uh, any news, anything just to share, uh, be it directly human, human relations related or uh, just some other topic uh, of, of interest to the commission? Um. All right. I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Lewis. Uh, good morning. I'm sorry. I see your hand I'm late. I was trying to sign in and ask for a panelist password. And I remember it's HRC 2024. Okay. That, 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 yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, um, you, you're um, a, 
I've been working with a um, community um, work group, revitalization work group. And one of the issues um, that the county even brought up to this work group is the lack of diversity. And um, I saw this on other community work groups that come together. Uh, this particular work group is particularly is focusing on uh, economic development node, one, one of the roads in Western Baltimore County. And um, and I, I, I guess I, I was surprised, and I guess I kind of was a surprise. Um, but I find that there is still the need to um, ensure that when there are these um, community-based and driven work groups, that um, if it's in our district, perhaps we need to just look into them, not like investigate, but just join them and, and look at their uh, composition to help ensure there's diversity. Because I've had to raise this um, I was asked to join this work group, not because I'm an HRC commissioner, but because I'm active in my community. And I did raise the issue. And when I raised the issue with them, they confirmed with me that the Department of Planning in the county had raised the issue with them previously. Uh, they had never done anything about it. Um, but I found that I had to be diligent. And every time there's an opportunity, they said, we're making this plan, we're making this plan. I said, um, but who did you talk to? Who did you consult? And I find that there's a need um, to be, really be diligent about um, community-based work groups and associations um, when they represent, um, when they say they represent the interests of the community. We need to look a little closer at that because it isn't always the case. And they do listen um, because um, I'm a nice person, uh -huh. but... <laughs> And I tell them nicely, <laughs> um, but I find that that is an issue and I bring it up to the commissioners of attention. And one thing, and this is not a community report, and I guess it's the right place to ask it. Um, the incidents at the um, Hebrew congregation, um, I've gone to my council person to um, have a meeting with uh, one of the leaders of that um, congregation regarding those incidents. And um, I was just wondering, um, in a situation like that, does the commissioner or the commission or some representative um, meets with um, those affected persons to find out um, their feelings? How are they feeling? What, are they, what is their perception? We know what the reality is, but we don't know what they're perceiving. We don't know if they're perceiving, if they become hypersensitive um, or if you know they, they've just dealt with it appropriately, um, but to get their perception, how do they feel? Um, Excellent point. Actually, I'll let uh, probably Ms. Brown Carter address the latter part. Mm -hmm. uh, the first part, actually, as far as diversity, um, it is crucial. And quite honestly, it's one of the factors that I know the executive director is looking at, even for our commission, to make sure that we do have various, we obviously Geographically, through the uh, councilmatic districts, we have diversity, but also to, as far as age, gender, uh, racial, religious, uh, ethnic, uh, uh, orientation, whatever sort of demographic we can consider, need to be considered um, for the commission. Because in, in the past, the commission itself was a, a very uh, diverse group, and that actually was helpful for us mm -hmm. because we were able to reach out and learn from. Uh, I, I'm not a proponent of saying that just because you fit a certain demographic, you are the spokesperson for that demographic, that, that can be unhealthy. Uh, but it does give us a, an entry point uh, to actually learn more and be more educated. So it's it's definitely crucial at the commission level and certainly also in the community. So uh, Commissioner Lewis, I, I appreciate you you raising that topic. And I'll, I'll actually ask uh, Ms. Brown Carter to address the latter part. Okay. Thank you so much. And so um, it has been brought to our attention the issues that have um, happened around the county. We are certainly um, working in, in our office to do certain checkpoints. Now, when it comes to meeting with certain um, organizations, we do want to make sure that we are incorporating everyone. So that means that we want to get community engagement involved. We want to make sure that the council person is involved. It has been brought to our attention that the council members are requesting uh, visits to the various districts from our DEI team. 
So this is certainly a part of that uh, conversation that will take place. We are also working with the police department. As you know, they are certainly making us aware of when incidents take place. Now to address the um, the tone or the pulse of the community itself, um, generally we want to make sure that they reach out. We don't want to be too forceful, but because you have certainly made this a um, a point for us to get engaged in that manner, we certainly will. Um, we won't make it as late as waiting for a council person to invite us to the district so that we can um, we can uh, have these conversations, but we'll certainly put ourselves in place to have those conversations if they're willing to have those conversations with our department as well. So we'll certainly keep you abreast of what our next steps will be um, as far as communication is concerned. Right, and, and the thing is, and when I thought about them, it, it made me think about their perception uh, mm -hmm. because a person's perception is their reality. And then I thought about um, some of the other incidents. I know we get the police reports and it's a report and it's accurate um, and it's an official document. But then um, to go beyond that to um, the person who was victimized to say, how are they perceiving what's going on? Like I said, the person can be, become hypersensitive in, in that case when they encounter a, a similar situation in the future. Like I said, they're hypersensitive, their response might be, um, might be too much uh -huh. and to, to go to that next step, not just, you know, the case, we know the incident, we're keeping track of it, but to help achieve um, an outcome that's going to move to a higher level, um, we would have to consider how that person perceived what happened to them. And if they need someone to talk to, I'm not talking about a whole therapy session, but just someone to talk to, to hear them, to listen to them, to say, okay, and to offer or reassure them in some way that the county is interested in them as an individual, not just the incident. Majority of the times when someone reports a hate crime, the police officers do give them our information as a reference for them to air out their grievances. So we are here and then they do let us know this person does want you to reach out to them. And so I, to, uh, to address your uh, concerns for those who may be hypersensitive to uh, said incidents that happen um, often, we want to make sure that we are reaching the ones who are suggested, uh, who are who have requested our office to contact them. And that is how we find out uh, when we get the hate bias incident report and also from when the officer says, when that person says yes, they let us know directly that this person wanted you to reach out to them. So we have had conversations with different people throughout the county, but certainly sometimes there are those who choose, as we know, within our own um, community conversations here with the Human Relations Commission, there's some certain communities that choose to deal with things amongst themselves. And so we do want to give people that kind of respect and not uh, be intrusive. So again, we will certainly reach out to those uh, congregate to he to the Hebrew congregation and see if they want to uh, initiate a conversation with our department and see if there's something that we can do. But we also know that this is also a sensitive time as we are in, uh, still in the midst of the um, the war in Gaza. So we, we want to be very, and it has moved um, a little bit further. And so we want to be very sensitive um, in, how, in our approach and how we are communicating and what we say. So we have to we have to think out that process. And again, that is why I said we have to bring in community engagement, make sure that the administration is aware of what we're doing because we don't want to step into a landmine and we can't get ourselves out just for trying to do the right thing. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And, um, and that's what I was thinking about also about we as commissioners. Like I said, I, I went through my county council Mm -hmm. representative and um I, I i spoke to him i was spoke because we communicate a lot about different things and um he uh made arrangements uh for that um to he explained i explained what i was interested in and and uh he said yeah um if he thought it was um good it was a good idea 
And uh, um, so, you know, he, he picked out the right person to um, get the right information. <clears throat> but also, but as we do get the um, these um, hate incidents, um, as commissioners, um, um, I know this will be new territory and there might be new, more training, um, but to, it's not just a report, these are people. And as commissioners, if the objective is to um, look at situations based on incidents or what we hear is going on and to in some way become very active and proactive in taking the necessary steps to move it to a better position. I was hoping that we can go forward, that we can start doing that a little bit more, not just seeing yes, reports, but like saying, okay, now that we've heard the report, is there something beyond that we can say, uh, whether it's a conversation, whether it's a small community meeting with community leaders or whatever, um, not saying we're gonna have legislation right. But if to to facilitate um, so that people are now this situation has now moved us to a better situation, and I was wondering about that. Thank, yeah. And there was one last thing, and I think I sent it in. I saw that the Merlin um, Human, I think they have a, a Human Relations or Civil Rights. I forgot what it was. They had a conference like about a month or so ago. It was oh, it was in Annapolis. That's what it was. Um, we're going to talk about that okay. if you give us a moment. Okay. Yeah, we, we have we 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 want to uh talk about the we wanted you to to have an opportunity to give your district report. Okay. There are things that we do have on the agenda. Okay. So if you would give us a moment, we'll certainly uh engage you in those uh meetings. So thank you so much. Thank you. So, thank you. If if we want to yield the floor to any of the other commissioners. If you have a report that you want to report at this time, um, we want to yield the floor to you. If not, we're going to ask that the staff brings up the uh, agenda. Thank you so much. If you scroll down just a tiny bit. Um, and then we have a presentation where we want to kind of just kind of bring you up to speed. So if you just go ahead and go down and then we'll go back to the. Yep, you can go ahead and go down. All right. So as Commissioner Blavitt mentioned, we have up and coming events as of tonight. We'll be at Delaney Valley High School for our town hall budget meetings. This is an opportunity for you to engage your council person again, also to engage the community. Our staff is there, as you can see, that is the entire DEI staff. It is not just the Human Relations Commission staff, but the entire staff is tabling. Um, myself and Andrea, the program manager for the MWBE side, we are there all night. We're there to make sure that the DEI team is represented in the uh, in the absence of our chief and executive director, Chief Peoples Brown. Um, we are looking forward to seeing those who are in District 3 tonight or members at large in District 3. Certainly some great conversations that has um, been happening as far as uh, the community. When I say great conversations, you don't know what is needed until someone is able to vocalize their opinion. So anytime anyone has an opportunity to say what they disagree or agree with in their community is a great opportunity for us to engage with the public. So again, on tonight, we'll be at Del Delaney Valley High School. Um, District 4 is next week. Um, we'll be in Randallstown Community Center. District 5, March 6th, we'll be uh, at, uh, at Perry Hall High School. And then District 7, which is the same day as our strategic planning day. So we will not have any evening meetings on that night. We'll talk a little bit more about that day. Um, because of that town hall meeting and then district one on March 27th. Uh, and that will be at CCDC Cadenceville. If you'll go ahead and go to the next page, it'll be greatly appreciated. Past events. We wanted to make sure that everyone got a copy of our annual DEI report, sent it out through our Baltimore County uh, Human Relations or either the DEI email. You should have certainly gotten a copy 
of that. It is a wonderful report. It gives you a glance at the entire operations of the division. It gives you a glance of what we are doing and also get kind of gives you a glance of what the future will look like. Um, so if you haven't had an opportunity to open up that file or, you, you know, you just was like, oh, okay, I'll get to it. I admonish you to take a look at it and some very good things that took place inside for the last year from uh, the time that Chief Peoples Brown took over in 2022 up until this point of December 2023. And so I just admonish you to take a look. Uh, on Tuesday, January 30th, 2024, we launched the Hate Bias Forum, which was the Central Maryland region. This was directed to for Baltimore County and Baltimore City, partnership with the Maryland Commission on Civil Rights, as well as the Office of the Attorney General. We had a wonderful time on both days, the 30th was certainly uh, the day that they engaged law enforcement, gave them an opportunity for training, but also gave them an opportunity to speak. And so many officers agreed that they would love to have more forums like this to engage um, those at the Maryland State Police level, those who are in charge with the FBI, those who are in charge with um, training and collecting data. And so we had Dave Engel there, who certainly gave a wonderful report on day one for law enforcement, and then he turned around and gave the same uh, same presentation for the community, but so no one missed out as far as hate crimes is concerned and hate bias incidents. And then on the 31st, again, as I mentioned, was the Community Engagement Day. Commissioner Michelle Greer was there. Thank you so much, Commissioner Greer, for attending, um, along with our county executive, our county um, state's attorney, Scott Schillenberger, was there, as well as our chief of police. And last but not least, our guest speaker today, Mr. Douglas Handy, was there, and he is going to give you some information. Now, to address what Commissioner um, Commissioner Lewis just brought up, as far as the hate bias form, it is our desire, because we know that everybody can't be in one place at one time, but it is our desire to gather all the information that was given for Baltimore County and between now and December of 2024 to have events where we are issuing to the count to the community these said this date this data um, modified training that is for Baltimore County specifically as we do community engagement. So as we build this out, we'll probably be pulling in a subcommittee to help us with this because we know that the staff can do it, but it, it helps us when our commissioners are involved. So please stay tuned for that as far as a subcommittee is concerned. Also, um, and uh, in uh, on Monday, May, I'm um, sorry, February 5th, 2024 was Human Rights Day in Annapolis. This was sponsored by the Maryland uh, Human Rights Agencies. That is all of the agencies. So that was Howard County, PG County, uh, Prince George's County. I'm sorry, we're getting out of the habit of saying PG County. Prince George's County, um, Montgomery County, Baltimore City, uh, us, uh, Frederick County was there. All of those who are um, leaders in human rights and civil rights in our areas. And we want to thank Commissioner Danny Blount for showing up on that day. So we do have representation. We are um, moving in the community. Uh, this was announced to you. We wanted to make sure uh, that we gave those who were sponsoring um, persons didn't occupy uh, registered seats because we are a sponsoring partner and we were allocated some seats. And so we wanted to make sure to give you the opportunity to be there with us. And that is why I sent that information out. Um, but um, from the Baltimore County side of legislation, Senator Benjamin Brooks showed up and uh, introduced his law. And there will be a sheet that is going out to you with the laws that we are following that are important to human and civil rights as we engage the legislators and what they are introducing. We certainly heard from a lot of legislators on that day, and we think we found a home for um, Human Rights Day. The library where we host was not far from the center of downtown. It was kind of different because we are used to being in the legislation buildings, but however, that is not um, accessible to us because of the renovations that are happening in both buildings on the Senate side and the delegate side. And so uh, right now, until uh, those uh, construction and uh, uh, those things are settled, the new home will be this Michael Bush uh, Library in Annapolis. And so the new date 
um, is being penciled in. It is not solid because we cannot hold that date until a little later on in this year. But we had a great time. The staff was there. Um, and that is that. We can go ahead and move up. As Commissioner Blount mentioned, we do have vacancies. The staff and I have been engaging with interviewing uh, potential commissioners uh, for the commission. Um, we certainly, every person um, is not going to, every person that uh, registers to be or uh, fills out the application to be a commissioner may not have the same views and ideals that we have, and we want to make sure that we continue our efforts to keep a diverse panel. And so we do have some that we will be suggesting to our, our county executive, as well as our county council members to be felt to uh, fill up those positions sooner than later. You'll get more information about that on March 13th. Uh, could you scroll up just a teeny bit? Right now, uh, the applicant pool is uh, three for District 4 and one for District 6. And so we will be um, sending over and then they will have the last day. Sometimes they have persons that they select on their own, um, as some of you are aware that they have appointed uh, you as their members. So this is our suggestion for those who have applied, but they may have applicants that they want to suggest on their own. So we certainly take an account of that. Um, the next page, please. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll table this discussion if you'll go back to the agenda. Because we want to give Mr. Douglas Handy um, an opportunity to um, speak with us on this morning. Um, give me one second. All right. And so Mr. Douglas Handy is the executive director of the Department of Equity and Cultural Proficiency for the Baltimore County Public Schools since July 2021. Mr. Handy has served in this role um, and he is passionate about providing each student equitable access to high quality educational programming by removing systematic barriers for all students. Mr. Handy holds a education certificate with technology, uh, with technology and education and administrator one and two endorsements. He is a doctoral candidate for educational administration and leadership at the Walden University. He has a master's of science degree uh, in curriculum and instruction with concentration and administrative leadership and science degree chemical engineering from North Carolina Agricultural Technical State University. Please join me in welcoming. And you can certainly, you don't have to clap your hands, but you can certainly use the cat clapping uh, emoji reactions and welcome Mr. Douglas Handy. Thank you so much for joining us and we want to yield the floor to you. Um, and this was uh, a partnership that we certainly uh, thank our Chief Peoples Browns for bringing us all together um, under this one umbrella so that uh, those of us who were concerned about our um, reach into the Baltimore County Schools, we are working, as you can see. So, Mr. Handy, we're going to hand the floor over to you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Brown Carter. Um, also, want you're on mute. Oh, Uh, you can turn your volume up just a tiny bit. Is everyone else having an issue or is it just me? Everyone else is having an issue. Okay. Hello. Yes, better. Yeah, better. I'm going to mute myself. Okay. Okay. I got it now. Thank you. Um, so um, thank you again to Ms. Brown Carter and Ms. Sasha Wilson um, and uh, you know, whole DEI, who is the former county government. I want to say good morning to the commissioners. Uh, thank you all for having me here as a guest with you this morning. Um, I'm going to try to present a few slides to you just to give you an overview of our strategic plan. Uh, so just give me a minute. Uh, 
can you all see my screen on the slide? Oh, no. oh, wait a minute. Oh. Not yet. Try it again. There we go. Okay. It's coming through. Yes. So then post it. Can you all see, you all see like the slides, you see like the presenter group. We were seeing your slide and also your, notes with the it. presentation view. Yeah. If you, if you want to stop sharing and then hit, are you using dual screens? I am. So that's probably so, so select the screen where you open up your presentation and presenter mode and then share the screen. How about now? Can you all? I guess you see it, but it's not a presenter. But... We're, we're seeing it. Now you the second slide in your presentation. Okay. So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna just I'm gonna try. Let me I'm gonna try one more thing. Tell me what you see now, and then I'm gonna just get moving. I don't want to take up all the time. Um. So what are you saying? That you saying the uh, notes and everything? No, no, not seeing notes. Just see uh, our guiding frame. Actually, just the your your pages are coming up perfect now. Okay. Perfect. All right. We're on the first page. Yes. Perfect. Thank you for your support. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, I want to talk to you about a strategic plan for the Department of Equity and Cultural Proficiency. So this is the plan um, that does guide the work of my department uh, throughout this current school year. I um, just want to give you a little background on the origin of our plan. Um, the team and I got together in May of 20, 2023. Uh, my team consists of four specialists, an administrative assistant, um, a program assistant, and myself. Uh, we convened a retreat uh, to develop our strategic plan for our current school year. As a team, we agreed that our strategic plan must be rooted in the mission and vision that we had established for our department. Additionally, we realized that we had not yet specified the beliefs which inform our mission and vision, nor have we come to agreement on our values, which in turn inform our beliefs. So our first step in identifying the values that we had as a team was to identify the values of each individual team member. Once each team member shared their individual values, we discussed those values and came to consensus on the values that would represent us as a whole. Through this process of identifying our values, we also engaged in community building, which is a core component of our work. You will see community building as a, as a theme woven, woven throughout our strategic plan. So the core values that we landed on as a team, um, you see on the screen, accountability, authenticity, compassion, honesty, humanity, perspective, relationships, and respect. So once we identified our team's values, we went on to develop our team's belief statement, which reads, uh, the Department of Equity and Cultural Proficiency believes that to obtain equitable outcomes in our system, we must promote authentic relationships rooted in humanity and grounded in compassion and dignity. So with our team's belief serving as a guide, we went on to develop our mission statement. And that reads, our department works to build the capacity of teachers, leaders, and staff to create inclusive environments that honor every person's race, ability, gender, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, including gender expression, language, immigration status, and socioeconomic status, to increase achievement for all students and to provide a variety of pathways to prepare students for college and careers. So the final piece of our framework describes what we consider to be the end state that we are working for. Our department promotes systems and structures that provide support for all BTPS students 
teachers, leaders, staff, and community members in which equity and access are embedded in all areas of academic programs, social emotional support, and business operations. So the next part of our strategic plan is a high level overview of the services that we provide to the BCPS community. You see those on the screen. So you will see each of these components of what we do reflected in our strategic plan. So everything I've shared to this point, you could think of as a front matter to our strategic plan. At this point, we're going to explore the actual content of the plan. That content starts with the four priority areas that our team chose to focus on during the school year. These four focus areas were chosen because we believe that they would enable us to make the greatest impact on achieving the mission that we set forth earlier in the plan. The priority areas also represent the systems and structures that we would leverage as we work towards our vision. So the purpose of our professional learning communities is for school and office leaders to collaborate to examine problems of practice that impede increased achievement for all students. This year, we will continue the professional learning communities that we started last year in partnership with our school principals, organized and feeder patterns, and the executive directors from the Department of Schools to supervise those principals. We are also starting professional learning communities with our central office leaders who will identify problems of practice that they will address in their work. In our system-wide equity training, participants will engage in conversations about racial equity and be critically self-reflective of thoughts, beliefs, feelings, and actions that promote or impede increased academic achievement for all students. Participants will also develop the capacity to cultivate inclusive learning environments that increase student achievement for all students. This year, our target audience for equity training includes staff development teachers and professional learning liaisons, our school-based and office-based equity liaisons, community school facilitators, and office support staff and paraeducators. In our equity academies, participants will build their capacity to lead for equity and to facilitate change as they examine individual, systemic, and structural factors that impede increased achievement for all students. For this year's equity academies, classroom teachers are the target audience. Several of our teacher equity academy members also serve as the equity liaison within their respective schools. Throughout the strategic plan, you will notice that equity liaisons serve as indispensable community members regarding the Department of Equity and Cultural Proficiency, achieving our mission and realizing our vision. The purpose of equity liaisons is to have selected school or office members working with school or office leadership teams to help faculty and staff create equitable, inclusive, educational, and workplace environments for all. School-based equity liaisons will participate in system-wide equity professional learning and attend monthly meetings, as well as um, they did attend the Maryland Cultural Proficiency Conference, which was held in Morgan State University in October 2023. And additionally, they will attend the spring symposium offered by um, my Department of Equity and Cultural Proficiency. Uh, central office equity liaisons will participate in system-wide equity professional learning. They will attend uh, check-ins and collective equity liaison meetings. They were also um, invited to attend the conference at Morgan State University. They'll be invited to our spring symposium, and they'll be participating in professional learning communities. Uh, for this next slide, which is really uh, my penultimate slide, I want to thank again um, my, my colleagues in the Baltimore County Division of, um, of Equity Inclusion, Diversity Equity Inclusion. Again, we talked earlier, you heard um, Ms. Ramona Brown um, talk about the, um, the hate bias form, uh, Ms. Ramona Brown Carter, excuse me, the hate bias form. Um, thanks to them, I was able, invited to the forum, got a lot of uh, information, a lot of education that frankly I was not aware of and really helped to mobilize me and give me a charge for my team and me on how we can better serve our community and be more responsive um, to incidents um, of paid bias that are happening within our school. Um, so I've been carrying this message back to uh, my colleagues in BCPS and anytime I present our strategic plan, I, I now include the information on how we can report these hate bias incidents um, with the intention of stamping them out. Um, so I want to thank again my colleagues 
uh, for you know inviting me here today, inviting me to this forum. Um, it is a wonderful partnership that I am glad to be a part of. Um, very important to the work that I'm doing in the school system, and um, you all are aware of you know aware of this information as you've already discussed. But just wanted to show you that we do include this information now um, as as an overview of the work we do with the department. Um, at this time, um, I want to thank you for you know your time. Um, allowing me to be here with you as a guest, and I'll answer uh, any questions that you may have. Oh, for first, uh, Mr. Andy, I want to say thank you. Um, one of the, I'm sure, as Ms. Brown Carter has expressed to you for quite some time, uh, there's been a desire to improve uh, what's happening, be more educated on what's happening in the schools and to have an active role. Uh, the commission did many years ago, um, and there's an evolution of a lot of things. Uh, but we really weren't aware of what was happening in the schools. And quite honestly, since May of last year, you, you've done remarkable work. Um, it's uh, to, get, to get this far this quickly. Um, I'm sure the next question that many commissioners would ask is, what can we do uh, from our perspective to support you as commissioners and also to further the work? And I understanding that this is a, prog a progression of first, educating and solidifying the core group of individuals that are working you're working with before you broaden the base so we understand that we have to be patient in some respects but uh just how, how can we help so thank you mr blavitt i appreciate your remark um the number one thing i think is continue to partner so again you know you um ms brown carter have invited me here as a guest today um, i mentioned the spring symposium i haven't had a chance to officially invite uh, the division of DEI, I, I will extend the invitation to them um, to be a part of that symposium. So I want to make sure that our faculty and staff see you um, as a partner the same way I do. So to continue to partner, um, please ask questions and, and challenge me. If there are questions, things that you see that need to be improved within the system, um, I'll, I'll take that ticket. Um, we do have an equity advisory you might have seen on that one slide. Um, I will tell you, well, we're kind of in a state of flux. Um, however, it might make sense to have, um, and um, Ms. Brown Carter, we can talk in more detail whether it is a commissioner on there. Um, when we first started that equity advisory, there was a space for, um, it said something like Baltimore County Government DEI, but I think it does make sense to have you all represented there. Um, it's a really good group of community members that meet, some are internal to BTTS, some are external, um, and then about quarterly we meet with the equity committee from the Board of Education. Um, so the other thing I was going to ask Mr. Blavitt is, you know, there is an open comment to the Board of Ed, um, if you, you know, so motivated. Um, I certainly can, can share out the partnership, but I think, again, partnering and letting folks know that we are partners in, the, in our collective work, um, I think that would be the, the main thing I would ask um, of you, um, you know, when you're in your capacity. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. If you would stop sharing your screen so that we could just have a full screen, it would be greatly appreciated. Sure. Um, thank you so much. Uh, let's give Mr. Uh, Handy a, uh, one. Either you can do hands up like this or you can use your emojis because that was certainly a, a great um, <clears throat> presentation. One of the things that we want to make sure that we are doing um, is certainly staying connected to the school. So whether you have children that are in the school system, your uh, your connection to the school system, maybe grandchildren or whomever, or maybe you're just concerned about the schools in your neighborhood, just make sure that you stay connected to the schools. Let them know who you are. Um, be present at those PTA meetings. In reference to the PTA meetings, myself and Bibios have had an opportunity to meet also with Ms. Susan Hahn, um, who's in charge of the Parent Teachers Association, I think it is, um, and uh, is the chief of staff there. And so we have another opportunity to help them engage parents and another perspective. So we are working to try and get these done. I see a couple of hands up. So I'm going to uh, think. Let's do Commissioner Greer, then we'll go to Commissioner Bryant, and then we'll finish with Commissioner Lewis. Thank you, Ramona. First off, um, thank you so much for your presentation today. I had the opportunity to, to be present at the Hate Bias Forum, and you certainly, um, as well as your team, did an excellent job. So thank you for your work. Sure. Um, uh, the question that I have is, how are you all beginning to address the layered barriers to equity and inclusion. For an example, minority students who have cultural and, and language barriers as well as disabilities such as autism. 
So thank you, Commissioner Greer, and thank you for um, your remarks around the state bias forum presentation. So um, the way I'm situated in my role, I have you know fellow executive directors who really are positioned to work directly with um, programs that support the, the population we talked about. Um, so I think the main challenge I see is, is making sure that we all are working collectively um, to address um, our students. Um, students need, you mentioned language acquisition. Um, because of the rate that our ESOL population is growing um, and full transparency um, challenges around the low graduation rate, relatively speaking, of our English language, our multilingual learners, we are starting to focus more in that area. Um, actually, one of your colleagues has been a great help to me, um, Juliana Valencia Banks, is, is actually the co chair of that equity advisory. Um, so she's helped to. Again, I mentioned challenge when I was talking to uh, Commissioner Blatter, um, but I really, we need that. I would tell you the system, we, we need to be challenged with the realities of what you all are saying, of what you all know to be true, so we can do better. Um, so I think uh, number one, Commissioner um, Greer, it's, it's the awareness, number one. Um, and then really some intentionality around serving students. And I was in a meeting earlier around teacher effectiveness, I'm on that committee. Um, but we need to do a better job of the system of looking at like the student, like a student who has those identity markers you just named. You know, they are um, limited English proficiency or they're multilingual learners and they're, um, you know, they're autistic. How do we make sure that student gets the services that that student needs to be successful? So it is, I mean, right there, that's a collaboration between, you know, our um, Department of Special Education, um, our uh, Office of ESOL. Uh, we also have a new director of multilingual achievement. So it's that coordination and then of course working with our uh, our school principal in that regard and those that um, those uh, teachers and support staff that are involved. Uh, but I'll tell you it, it does um, a lot more work needs to be done and a lot of my, my team's work that deals with um, you know addressing folks around their beliefs too. Like the student you described, we believe that student can actually achieve at a high level. Um, so a lot of our work does come in with that training piece on getting um, educators and other staff members to interrogate their beliefs so they can, um, you know, frankly do better by that student. So I, I would say just in summary, you know, a lot of collaboration, um, but ongoing collaboration and also centering the students who are most in need. Um, and I do, like I said, I, we have a ways to go um, to, to get where I believe we need to be on that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your question. Awesome. Commissioner Bryant, did you have a question? You're on mute. Sorry. First of all, thank you very much for that presentation. I was really impressed by that. Um, in addition to being a, a member of the HRC, I'm also on the, the Maryland Commission for LGBTQIA plus affairs. And your slides look like a template that ought to be shared with public schools around the state. I don't know if you would be available, if would be able to share those templates. I personally would like a copy of your slides just for myself. And then per perhaps you can talk with your people to see if they would be willing to have those slides or a version of them posted on the website for our commission. Our goal is to create a network of DEI professionals around the state because not every county and not every county school system is at your advanced level. And we've got a lot of work to do, and um, it looks like your system would be a good place to start. Thank you so much for the um, for that. Um, we will certainly uh, uh, talk with Mr. Handy a little bit more mm -hmm. as far as his presentation is concerned, um, and what we can clear to put on the county has certain restrictions right. as far as our website is concerned where we so we'll certainly communicate with them to uh, figure out what that looks like um if if that partnership with sharing that can be available yes I'm sure um, we're going to have some a dance to do with the yeah. same too so yeah. we can and, then, and and uh just to uh 
to let you know, as far as um, the DEI is concerned, Baltimore County is on the cutting edge as far as having a division that is codified in, in uh, the county code, as well as our school system having uh, representation like uh, Executive Director Handy is concerned. And so when we look at the National County Association, we are a part of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they are pulling together the resources of the DEI officer. So if there is something that is happening um, on the state and on the um, on the uh, local level as well, we certainly want to make sure that we are all a part of the table and making sure that we're doing that. So thank you so much. Um, and we'll go to Commissioner Lewis. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, I was just saying um, I agree with everything you said and thank you. I just had a follow up for uh, Commissioner Brian. Thank you for your, your, your remark. Um, Commissioner, I just want to make sure it's, 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 a, it's a statewide LGBTQIA commission. Can you just, is that you're a member of? Can you just repeat that? The organization is the Maryland Commission on LGBTQIA plus affairs. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's one of a bunch of commissions that operate in the state of Maryland. Okay, thank you for that. Sure thing. Thank you. And Commissioner Lewis. Good morning. Thank you. Um, I, I have two issues or two questions. The first one is about um, uh, the state delegate, um, Sheila Roof, um, the 44, that's the district I'm in. She's proposing a bill uh, regarding under juvenile justice that um, students who are charged with disruptive behavior in the classroom um, is going to be reduced to, um, it's going to be reduced to a misdemeanor. Now, one of her reasons, her main reason for doing that is she's because she says um, when this charge is placed on students, it is um, unfairly, inequitably, unjustly, unequality um, placed on students of color than other students. That's her motivation for reducing the charge because students of color get it two to three times more frequently than not. And I was wondering, is that something that your staff would deal with? And if so, what do they do in those situations? And they docu I mean, obviously she must have documentation because she wouldn't have put the bill into the state legislature. So thank you, Commissioner Lewis. So um, let me frame my response this way. Um, I do know our superintendent, Dr. Rogers, has been active in Annapolis um, advocating for particular legislation. I, I'll, in full transparency, I do not know where she stands on this particular piece of legislation uh, from State Delegate Ruth. And I did hear about this legislation. I need to do some, some additional reading up. Um, so to answer your question, I'm, I'm not directly involved in my capacity. Um, I do have a counterpart who is our executive director for school safety. Um, she would be more involved. Um, one thing I'm trying to do is, again, stay connected, um, you know, with my peers who are directly involved in matters such as the one you named. Um, I, I do know we have a, a major disproportionality issue um, as far as when you look at students who are disciplined, um, our, our black students are disciplined at a higher rate. Um, disproportionately to, to their enrollment in the school system. And also our students who receive special education services. Um, and we also know that our black students are overrepresented within um, those who receive special education services. So first I wanna you know, acknowledge the issue um, that, I, that I believe, I guess, you know, state delegates trying to, um, to address, um, I guess, in, on her end of the, uh, or I guess within her realm, way to the issue. Um, I believe there's a lot more we need to do with the system. I think it, doesn't, it goes to that those beliefs that I talked about, how those beliefs inform action. When we find a student who is, um, might find themselves in a situation where they could be involved in activity that results in criminal charges. You know, as, as system staff, do we have any indication that that's a possibility for that student? Do we have early warning signs? When we get those early warning signs, are we responsive to those those early warning signs? You know, um, are we suspending students and not giving them any type of support and having them come back into our schools to where those students are? are those students are safe as well as their their 
uh, being their fellow students, the school and staff. So I feel like there's things that we need to do a lot better with the school system um, that might inform what the state delegate is trying to do. Um, but I'm not directly involved. And when it gets to that point, when there's actually like criminal charges, I am no longer involved. But I, I department of uh, school safety is. Uh, thank you for your response. And I, I understand that, but I was wondering, since now there is documentation and now a state legislator has felt that in order to make it more fair for students of color to actually go back and change the state law so that students of color are not charged more frequently than other students, is there something, is there a program or something that the school oh. is going to be doing to make sure oh. that that happens more fairly? Commissioner um, Lewis, one of the things that our office is working with Chief McCullough and his team as far as youth juvenile offenders, um, we're working with them in the way that they uh, look at the way that they are putting the charges into the system. There's a new system that is going in place as far as that's concerned. And even with um, local state's attorney, Scott Schillenberger, that will probably be a greater question for him as opposed to um, Mr. Handy, because that goes into legislation and how they are charged uh, within, the, uh, within the criminal justice system. Um, I don't think that the school system would have anything directly to do with that other than housing the students and making sure that, you know, whatever processes are put in place, that they are ready to make those accommodations in the school system itself, but his office would not be. And so what we can do is try and see if we later on in the year, I know March is going to be a very busy month for us with the strategic planning. But what we will do is see if we can get um, Mr. Schillenberger to stop by and maybe he can address that question. But that definitely isn't in Mr. Handy's wheelhouse. And we want to make sure that we have the appropriate person to help us navigate this question because I'm sure we don't want to give uh, incorrect answers um, to such an important uh uh, question and such an important agenda for our African American or per, uh, pe uh, students of color, or students with language and en English speaking proficiencies or anything like that. We want to make sure that we are making room and making space um, and that we're doing it adequately and with the proper person. So thank you, Mr. Handy, for um, addressing um, Ms. Ms. Lewis's, Commissioner Lewis's question um, and we'll divert his, her question, the latter part of her question to see if we can get swing around and get uh, local state's attorney Scott Schillenberger in with us because he certainly did give a presentation at the hate bias um, summit and he did speak as far as youth offenders were concerned um, and as well as some of the, the uh, ways he also spoke with the police officers on how he needs them to guide their questions and things like that. So this would be a perfect question for his office. So we'll make sure that we document your question and we'll hope, we'll um, put a pen in it and we'll certainly let him know if he's available to come and speak with us um, in April or May, if he's available, if he could address that in that area. I see uh, that Commissioner Bryant has put a link in there for you, Mr. Handy, in the uh, chat box. So if you wanna go ahead, that gives you a little bit more information to that commission. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Handy, for spending your time with us today. We really appreciate it. This was wonderful. I know our commissioners um, have certainly, like Commissioner Blavis said, have certainly voiced their opinion about our partnership with the school system. And so hopefully this, like you said, this is not the end. We know that we have a lot more work to do and a lot more things that we have planned and certainly um, as we begin to allocate our services throughout Baltimore County, we'll certainly make sure that Mr. Handy is a part of what we do here in DEI, um, on, for DEI in Baltimore County as the division uh, we, is the overarching program for the Human Relations Commission, but the Human Relations Commission board members are members of the community and they certainly have the availability to contact their council persons, the county executive, as well as go to school board meetings on behalf of the community. So again, thank you so much, Mr. Handy. Is there anything else you want to say before you um, leave us on today? 
Um, no, I think I'm good, um, Ms. Brown Carter. Um, you have my email address, so I guess there's anyone from the commission that wants to uh, follow up. Um, I did mention the equity advisory, if anyone's interested in getting more information on that. Um, so, Ms. Brown Carter, would you be willing to, well, I could put my, let me put my email address in the, in the chat. I was going to say, if you're going to modify your uh, presentation, we can certainly make sure they get the presentation. We'll make sure they have your email address and any information that you want to give them um, in reference to that equity um, advisory council. It'll be greatly appreciated. I know that some have already um, said that they want, they are certainly interested in being a part of this group. And so we want to make sure that we give everyone the opportunity to see the information and everyone has the opportunity to be a part. So if you afford it to myself and Tasha, we'll make sure that they get that information. Okay, I'll do that. So I'm gonna just put my email address and office number and mm -hmm. I'll follow up with the uh, connect over on the equity advisor if you can share it with, with us. That's great. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we will, we have a couple of more minutes left in this meeting. We know that we wanted to bring Mr. Handy on to certainly give you a, a, bit, a path forward into the Baltimore County School System. I would ask Ashley if she'll pull the agenda up. We're going to run through this last part of the agenda um, really quickly because there is some good information that you need to have. Um, and you already got it, but we want to elaborate a little bit more on it. Um, and we actually, We'll, we will be sending a presentation with this information in. So I'm not going to scroll um, into, the, uh, into the presentation, but I just want you to see this information. As far as new business is concerned, Commissioner Blavitt, we want to introduce um, our uh, commissioner. We've been working with the Maryland nonprofit who is our strategic planning partner on our strategic planning phase. And so out of this, we've come out uh, with a commissioner commitment statement. We also have a youth role as well as a commissioner role and what our desires are um, moving forward in the strategic planning. So our, um, our request to you is to be able to send this out to the commissioners within the next week in preparation for the 13th. So you all have an opportunity at a glance, glance to see it so that on the 13th, it is not your first time seeing it. Um, it doesn't come as a shocker, but it comes as a um, as an information for you to see, to understand as we strategically move forward in this path of reimagining the Human Relations Commission and us becoming an active uh, board. Again, this is the requirements that will be uh, uh, given to new commissioners as well as to yourselves and as well as a commitment statement. Also, we'll be uh, sitting, uh, also sending you a copy of what our standard operation procedures would be as far as inner operation, inner internal operations with the uh, the executive staff, and then as well as our external engagement with the commissioner. So with your commission, we would like to send these forms out to the commission board members to look over at a glance so that everyone can see, do we have the permission of you to do so? Please do. And, and again, I would encourage everyone to take the opportunity to review it before. And also, if there's some uh, high level questions that you have, uh, Ask in advance. Um, so, I mean, th this isn't, uh, it, it's most beneficial if we spend our time together, maybe discussing some nuances rather than understanding it. So, uh, please take the time. If there are questions, certainly can reach out to me, reach, reach out to Ms. Brown Carter, also to the executive director, we'll be back. Uh, so, uh, please take that time. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm going to turn it over quickly to Ashley Elliott, who is our Title VI program coordinator, and she has some good information for you to share then. Ashley? Um, okay, really quickly, uh, the Title VI program and policy was approved. It's been about four weeks now. It's actually approved on January 22nd, so yay for us in the DEI office. Um, we are actually in the implementation process um, of the program. We're kind of um, in phase one. So we're introducing the policy and just kind of developing out what the roles would be for department heads and our DEI liaisons. 
Um, we're also developing out some of the supporting documents used for complaints and things like that. So we're on the roll. Next couple months, we should kind of um, be in phase three and receiving complaints and um, kind of doing putting in the work and doing the work for the actual program itself. So we're excited. Um, and this program is actually going to be housed in the HRC part of our office. Um, not directly with the Human Relations Commission, but under the Human Relations um, part, section of our office. So, so thank you so much. Ashley has worked so hard to get this program to this point. And so as we operate under Article 29, which is a direct representation of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, that Title VI is built directly out of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. And so we are ecstatic to add this program uh, under the human under the human relations program uh, portfolio. And so thank you, Ashley, for your work. And as we begin to develop out, we certainly will give you um, updates on what is happening if we are getting any complaints. But we know that with any easy rollout, we know it takes time. Um, and so we want to make sure that we are doing this correctly. So congratulations, Ashley. As far as our uh, commission standard operating procedure, I also want to give kudos to Bivios, who is the uh, scriber of this of this uh, particular document. So when you get it and you look through it, just know that it has had blood, sweat, and tears. Um, <laughs> added to it and she did a wonderful job in our Maryland uh Maryland uh nonprofit partners um help with minimal help uh and so she did a great job with doing that also just want to reiterate that the town halls are we certainly gave you that information now I do want to uh, we didn't get a chance to put this in this but this is going to be very quickly on the diversity equity and inclusion division side um, program overarching. There are a couple of things that are coming down the pike. Next week, we will have a Black History panel, which Commissioner um, Danielle Marshall will be a part of. We also have the Teen Summit that we are helping with uh, all for This Is County uh, East. We did County West um, at Owens Mill High School last year, um, I believe in November. And so we will be doing County East uh, at Silas Point, and that will be on May 18th. It is still in its planning stages. We just want to give you the update about that. And as soon as the flyer for the Black History Planner panel is approved, we will get that out to you as well. It's going to be a virtual event, um, and we'll be working with Dr. Jasmine Lee from uh, Goucher College, as well as uh, Mr. Handy, um, who will be also representing the uh, Baltimore County Public School System. So we are excited to see this panel take place. Um, last but not least, um, uh, we just want everyone to just make sure that you are connecting with your PCRC. Um, we are at the budget town halls meetings. The police department is there. And there, um, they, that is the way that they connect with the community. And so we are in the uh, in the process of uh, connecting with them to get an understanding of when their meetings take place. We talked talked about this some years ago for those who were here, but making sure that we're connecting with the police department. So at least those who are concerned about crimes or concerned about reporting things also know that the Human Relations Commission um, is available to them as a resource. So this is also um, plugging into uh, Commissioner Lewis's uh, response for the Hebrew congregation. So when these come up and the police are holding their community meetings, we're asking you to, uh, if uh, another avenue for you to be involved in the community, if time permits and your schedule permits for you to be connected with the police department in that way. Also, we have launched the equitable policing um, advisory Work group. So we have moved from a, um, uh, we moved from, I'm sorry, task force. We moved from an advisory group to a task force with our chief people's round is the chairperson of. And both meetings took place during the hate bias forum week. So on the 29th was the actual first task force meeting, moving from the advisory group to the task force meeting. And then we also had our first virtual community meeting. So 
as we begin to develop out, and these, I believe these are going to be quarterly, as we begin to develop out these processes, we'll certainly keep, keep you in mind and keep you connected. Those dates came so quickly. So if you didn't get a chance or didn't hear about the community uh, panel, we do, I mean, the community discussion, we do apologize. Um, but a lot of things were happening simultaneously. Um, as you can see, we are trying to get back with our connections to the communities and in different avenues. And just to make sure the community knows that the Baltimore Human Relations Program and compliance areas are open for business. Um, and this is the way that we are uh, engaging the community in these manners. Um, so with that being said, I wanna turn it back over to Commissioner Blavitt um, to have the final say and just to, as a reminder for March uh, 13th, um, Commissioner Blavitt, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And again, a lot of wealth of information. It, it, it's actually very rewarding for those of us uh, uh, commissioners to realize how much is going on behind the scenes uh, that the staff that you all are doing to, to really on behalf of the county. Um, it, it is remarkable. And obviously more staff, more ability to cover more things. And uh, again, a lot, a lot of positive news. That's, that's good to hear. Uh, and again, uh, reminder, yes, we will be meeting from 9 to 2. Um, I think we tend to leave the historic courthouse. Is that still our plan? Uh, yes, is Brown yes. Brown? Uh, we'll be meeting. And you'll get uh, specific instructions as we get closer to the day as far as parking is concerned. Um, and as far as um, uh, instructions on the room. But we're in the historic courthouse in room 118 um, as of now, yes. So, so again, thank you all for your participation during the day today. Uh, appreciate you taking this time out and I'll let you go ahead and do the official uh, turning off of the recording. Thank you so much for attending this meeting. Any and everything that you need can be uh, answered here at the Baltimore County uh, Human Relations Commission. Our phone number here is 410-887-5917. The staff will be glad to assist you in any way. Thank you, Commissioner Blavitt and all the other commissioners for attending. And this adjourns our meeting. Thank you.